Now we detect some GIT surgical problem in pediatric age group. The, the, all of them are emergency and you should be familiar with them, especially in the clinical practice when you are come to the uh, residency program and you may see now and then you should be aware of them because they are life threatening and should be checked early. So first of all, is duodenal atresia here. You uh, see there is the duodenum is atretic. The incidence is one in 10,000 and account for 60% of intestinal atresia in the West. It may be detected uh, antenatally by ultrasound in 50% of cases. Uh, the mother has polyhydraminous and the uh, x-ray, plain x-ray abdomen, you see double bubble sign, double bubble sign, one in the stomach, one here in the first part of the duodenum. So double bubble sign, and there is no gas in the abdomen. Uh, the vomiting here is bilious, especially in the first 48 hours. If the obstruction is to the umbilical of vata, two-thirds of the cases, or non-bilious if the obstruction is proximal. So you have to put NG tube for decompression and give IV fluid and to prepare the child for surgery. The surgery is usually not an emergency. So you have to support the child fluid and electrolyte and any sort of infection or any other thing, treat hypoglycemia or other problem and they refer to surgery for correction. Surgery, uh, usually they do, did you, did you know duodenal duodenostomy, laparoscopic or open. The proximal and distal duodenal pouch are opened and joined, bypassing the atretic segment. Placement of trans and stomatic nasal tube allow early enteral feed and avoid the need for long line for enteral nutrition and it's a problem. Long-term outcome, duodenoplasty is required if severe proximal digestion occur. Next. Here you see the normal anatomy of the anus, uh, I mean the anal canal. You see here the anal canal from this area to this, this transitional zone. And uh, this is the anoderm and anal gland here, and the anal crypts, gland and anal crypts. And these are the column of Morgagni. And this is the dentate line. This is the dentate line. And this is the rectum. So this is the normal anatomy of the anus. You have the external sphincter, which is uh, voluntary. Here you see a case of imperfect anus in the female. Uh, this anus is imperforated. Uh, and there is a vestibular fistula with the vagina and B, the cloaca, this is also imperforated anus and this is one, one part open in cases of uh, imperforated anus. So when you face a new unit, you have to examine all orifices in the body and be sure that they are patent. You should check for the patency of the anus. Not only see the meconium, you have to uh, clean the napkin area and check specifically for anus. Why? Because you may have a fistula, rectovaginal fistula, or vestibular fistula, and there is passage of meconium from the rectum to the, this fistula, and there is meconium in the perianal area. So this doesn't exclude uh, anal, anal stenosis, anal stenosis or obstruction, or imperforate anus. So specifically, here you may have a boy here with imperforated anus, low variety, is very near this area, not like this one. This is long area they call it high variety so puborectalis muscle here and the external external sphincter present and this area is atretic so this need operation over stages you may 
do colostomy for this baby but this one you may do uh, incision and everything will be okay with follow up the other important thing we see it now and then especially in infancy is intussusception which occurs when a portion of elementary tract is telescoped into an adjacent segment so they call it intussusception more common in five months to three years 90 percent of cases occur are idiopathic no cause is found two to eight percent there is a recognizable lead point especially in cases of flu mesentic adenitis uh, Henoxulae purpura, Michelzyber reticulum, intestinal polyp, neurofibroma, stain replication, cysts, and so on. Leomyoma, hematoma, ectopic, pancreatic tissue, and an anastomotic suture line, enterostomy tube, post transplant, hemangioma, malignant condition like lymphoma. So these they form a leading point and lead lead to uh, telescoping of the one segment with another and they lead to tussusception. So the child may present with sudden onset of in the previously well child with severe paroxysmal colic pain with pallor that recurs at a frequent interval and accompanied by straining effort with legs and knees flex and loud cries. Uh, as the disease progresses, the child may pass red carangial stool which is, uh, which is a late sign of intersusception. So uh, history is suggestive and you do physical examination to feel for the mass and ultrasound performed lead to diagnosis, which shows the do not sign. So this is here, uh, enema, treasure enema, diagnostic and therapeutic. So you will see there is a filling defect here, filling, Defect obstruction is evident in the proximal transverse colon, contrast material between the entus septum and the entus CPN are raw, responsible for the coiled spring appearance. Coiled spring appearance. So, this is an emergency, and surgeon should be informed. And you have to prepare the patient as supported by fluid. Correction of fluid and electrolyte, correct hypoglycemia if, if it is a present, correct infection also if it is a present. So refer to the surgery for the correction, either reduction or resection. It depends on the state of the bowel at the time of operation. So early referral, you save the child. The other problem is Hirschbring disease, which is a congenital agangliosis of the distal colon extending proximally from the rectum. Hirschbring disease affects the rectosigmoid, rectosigmoid only short, short segment, in a short segment maybe. 25% of cases agangliosis extend more proximally. Total colonic agangliosis may occur in 10% of the cases. But short segment is more common between sigmoid and rectum, rectal sigmoid junction. Classically tried of neonatal bilious vomiting, dominant distension, and delayed passage of meconium more than 48 hours. So these should be kept in mind. The child or the neonate may have Hirschbring disease. So it is uh, a suspected clinically. Diagnosis by section biopsy, and there is no need for preparation of the child can be performed in the unit without general anesthesia. Open biopsy and their GA is required in older infant and children. Diagnose, diagnosis confirmed by histologic confirmation of absent ganglion cells by eosine and hemotoxin stain with hypertrophic nerve trunks on acetylcholesterol staining. Calretinin staining absent in, when you use this stain, it is absent in Hirschbring disease and may be supported. Contrast anemia may demonstrate transitional zone, like this one. This is dilatation proximally and this is narrowing here. So surgical treatment is excision of the atritic or aganglionic segment and coloanal anastomosis, follow through of proximal 
normally in the vetted colon, initial management is directed at nasogastric decompression, rectal washout, up to three times per day, retained volume should be less than 20 ml per kg saline. So you have to suspect this problem in any child who has it may present later on, not only in the neonatal period, may present at any other age. Delayed, it may not its severity. So constipation early in the neonatal period will raise suspicion of tissue brain disease or other problem in the GIT. The other problem is pyloric stenosis. Non-bilious projectile vomiting is the all or the initial symptom of the pyloric stenosis, congenital pyloric stenosis. Start after three weeks of age, but symptom can develop as early as the first week, depending on the severity, as late as fifth week of fifth month of age. Because of recurrent vomiting and loss of hydrochloric acid from the stomach, the infant may develop hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. So, unconjugated hypochloremia is more common than conjugated and usually resolved with surgical correction of this problem. Diagnosis is established by palpating the pyloric olive or pyloric mass. Firm, movable, approximately 2 cm in length, olive shape, hard, best palpated from the left side and located above and to the right of the umbilicus, like this one. These are the peristalsis of infant with pyloric stenosis in the mid epigastric region beneath the liver edge. Ultrasound confirms the diagnosis, shows the elongation and thickening of the pyloric canal. So you do test feed, we call it test feed, because the child after, after uh, vomiting is hunger. So let him take the, his. Uh, feed and then peristalsis will be visible because the emptying of the stomach is, uh, is difficult or hindered because of uh, this stenosis you will feel the mass treatment is initially supportive correct fluid and electrolyte uh, and hypoglycemia and then you prepare for surgery surgery is Ramstead operation or pyloromyotomy. Pyloromyotomy, just uh, you do incision of the muscle and release the mucosa and everything will be okay. The child will start feed early. Uh, the other one is esophageal atresia. Here you can see now in the edge a new net with uh, froth secretion in the mouth and choking with feet. You may suspect the uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. So uh, practically any child with or any new net come with cesarean section. We pass an NG tube to check the patency of the way from the mouth to the stomach. And any child or neonate with, neonate with frothy secretion in the mouth, difficulty of swallowing, choking, the, the patient or neonate may present with chest infection. So you have not to delay this uh, problem diagnosis. Usually, should take a fistula. Here, the most common is the proximal pouch or atretic, and there is connection uh, distal segment with the trachea, so atresia with fistula between distal esophagus and trachea. Here, 8%, both of them are atretic and there is no connection with the trachea. Or there is an H-shaped fistula without atresia, so the patient may present with recurrent chest infection. So you hear the learning objective of your topics and you will see them you check them. These are the references from which uh, my lecture was taken. And uh, thank you for your listening. And if you have any comment, any question, any addendum, you can write it down in the Google Classroom 
or on uh, YouTube channel. Thank you very much. See you.